another vlog. The Polska became a topic of conversation in a Facebook group that I am part of only recently. The Tuesday Tuesday group which is a massive group from all international players and it's run by Sel Adamu and Benjamin Potton and they put forward a tune every week which you can learn it or not it's up to you and if you learn it you're encouraged to put a video of you playing it up and it seems to be a really wonderful community of people at all different levels of playing just getting together and sharing their versions of different tunes this was the first tune that i became aware of in the group based on the fact i was socializing last monday with a group of my friends we got together and played all sorts of different stuff but my friend becky really wanted to get a video of us playing this tune which is Grins Hans Yes Pols Polska, I believe. Apologies to Swedish people watching that are offended by my pronunciation. We got a video of us playing it and it came out in the way that it came out. We had a brief discussion about where's the two and where's the, you know, where's the one, where's the three? And particularly in Polska's, where's the second beat? Because it is a mobile second beat. There is a lot of kind of push and pull as to where you can place that second beat. And we had a brief discussion about it, but at the end of the day, we just sat down and we played it. But having since posted that video to the Tuesday Tuesday group, um, realised just the kind of absolute huge spread of different interpretations of rhythm and just people generally struggling with it and people being very vocal about how much they'd struggled with it. So I thought I'd put together an amateur's guide to the Polska. I'm calling myself an amateur here. I don't consider myself an expert in Swedish music or the Polska, but I have some information to share based on things I found in that group and stuff that I've picked up as a traditional musician over the years. One of the big things as a trad musician that you will probably pick up in whatever culture you are learning in 
is that there are variations upon variations of most traditional tunes. And this is based on how things get passed on, usually orally, people learn things by ear, they learn the name by ear, and this is how we get different variations appearing different names of the same tune because you know you can imagine shouting it across a pub people not quite hearing you and things get named as they get named i've done it myself over the years if you haven't seen the jean creme sort of documentary <laughs> go and have a little look at those videos with this tune it has become popularized i believe because of the wonderful andy cutting and his solo album which was released for i don't know about 15 odd years ago something like that on that album he has called this tune c-e-g now, the wonderful Vicky Swan, who I class as the goddess of all Swedish music here in England, at least anyway, nickel harpist, bagpiper, she plays a myriad of different instruments and she's a wonderful person, full of knowledge. Do go and check her YouTube channel out because it's just full of gorgeous tunes and she's a wonderful educator as well. And I think her videos are worth watching. I'll link to one, the one that I'm used the most for this video just here. She has a whole kind of nickel harper, beat workshop on how to play Grins Hans Jesk Pols Polska and she also knows how to say it properly as well so do definitely go and watch it at least for that. In that video she believes, she kind of relays this story that this tune is referred to as C-E-G because in Swedish C-E-G-E-R is C or G. The E is an I, a letter I, but it sounds like an E. So again, you can imagine oral traditions being passed on, C, E, G. That is how this tune tends to get passed around. You'll find lots of different YouTubers that have posted this video under that title, and you'll find it under that title on Andy's own album. Vicky explains that it's believed that the tune was played in one area of Sweden in the key of C major, and then it moved and got played in the key of G major elsewhere. Now, we know in England that that happens quite a lot. So if you move around the country, generally we're a D and G nation over here. We play in the key of D or G or E minor. Dependent on your culture, you'll be playing in different keys. So we can actually understand how that can happen. Tunes get taken from one culture to another or just from one place to another. And the key signature changes. In England, this tune it tends to be played in G major. But just for continuity and why not, I have an instrument here in GC. I'm going to give it a go in C, just in case anyone here is on a GC instrument and wants to play along with this tune.
slight bag of spanners in places, but really defining the one and the three brings you back into that mentality. <laughs> the other thing I think that's important as a traditional musician or somebody who has a basis in traditional music is to understand the dance form because most traditional music has a basis in dance. And particularly for the polska, it's really been useful for me to learn how to polska, although it's gone a bit rusty, I have to say. I learnt to polska about five years ago. There was a brilliant series of workshops that were hosted by the Third Beat Dance Collective. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for cracking the polska. And I learnt how to do it. And actually, I had a little go the other day. I'll just insert some footage of me dancing around my living room. <laughs> Did you enjoy your Polska lesson? Polska? Polska kitty? That was me the other day dancing around to Vicky's video. I just wanted to see if the dance steps were still in there and I'll link to a video down below of a really beautiful simple little video of a group of people dancing Polska. It's not really a, a workshop or anything but it just shows you what the dance looks like done by actual Swedish people. As I sit and edit this vlog, I realise I didn't really make it clear that there are different types of Polska and they all have very different needs in terms of where you put the emphasis and if that second beat is mobile or not. For instance, the slang Polska is quite a simplistic one and it's very even, so it's an even distribution of the three beats. But there are also many variations of Polska across Sweden and I don't know most of them. <laughs> I always think of Polska, what I'm demonstrating in this video and the link that I've linked below is the basic Polska, but I don't even know if that's correct to say that. But it's very regional and I know that Swedish music has high standards as to how things get played. So I just wanted to say that just to make it clear that I do understand that, I just don't necessarily know what I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> so the basis of the dance is stepping on the one and stepping on the three but it really has a feeling of moving over the bar line so it's like a three one three one and the two is somewhere in between the one and the three in this tune vicky suggests that the up of the two is quite quick after the one i have heard this tune played in all sorts of different ways and certainly the way that andy plays it is that the two fits reasonably evenly between the one and the three it was an interesting point of conversation last week with my friends that apparently there is a discussion on a video of andy playing on youtube i'll see if i can find it and if i can i'll insert the screenshot here the feeling of a polska is all about uplift and also spinning round so there are two elements to the polska dance the walking element and the spinning element. So again, not a professional dancer or expert in these matters, but I'm gonna give it a go and show you. It comes from lots of bouncing in the knees. So as with a lot of continental dancing, there's lots of svikt as they call it in Sweden. So there's this bounce and it's about that kind of upward motion. So you're, yes, you're sinking down, but you're trying to bounce yourself up as if you had a spring in between your knee and your hamstring or your calf muscle and your hamstring. So you can kind of just kind of get used to that. I'm slightly on the balls of my toes, um, on the balls of my feet, that's probably wrong, but it just helps me to, to get that bounce. And then with the Polska step, you want to try and feel the roll through your feet. And it's stepping on the one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, and then constantly bouncing. And you're sort of putting the bounce on the two and that bounce on the two it's wherever you want it to be <laughs> or wherever the music tells you but for the moment while you're just practicing this you can just put it quite evenly so that essentially you're just bouncing you're walking around in a circle usually you have a partner and then the spinning element there are two different steps depending on whether you're leading or you're following i'm not going to pretend that i can remember properly but i know that on I think it's the following position, you pause, you kind of have a little moment on the spot on the one, and then it's two, three, you move, and you're trying to spin with your partner. So essentially, it's all about that lift and into the swing. It's about that perpetual motion that the music is trying to give you. So you end up going from 
One, two, three, one, two, three, pause, two, three, pause, two, three, pause, move, move, pause, move, move. Another thing I didn't do was complete the dance steps and show you the leader's dance steps in the spinning motion. Can't possibly put this out without completing that. I'm going to quickly show you that now. And just for a laugh, I'll show it you like this. If I'm leading, I am on the inside of the circle, so my partner would be here on the outside, and I would be leading them round with my arm round their back. And we'd be walking with the inside feet first. So it'd be one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three. And then the leader goes into the turn like this and it's probably going to look mental me spinning around with stripy socks on but you get the idea so the leader always is stepping on the one and the three as far as my memory can serve and then you can just go back into the walking round so as the polska progresses you can choose with your partner as and when you go into the spinning you can totally do the dance as the walk it's entirely possible to do that. It's really nice just to sort of stand by your partner and have a chat and a little groove. But the spin is sublime. I have to say, when I first managed to do it, I almost cried because it felt so beautiful to do against the music. So give it a go. See if you can pick up those basic dance steps, at least just to get the feel of the sfict, which is what we want to take into our music. It's all about the three and the one the three and the one. And I can remember after doing that Polska workshop that life was all about the three and the one. I was walking around everywhere on the three and the one. <laughs> so as much as you can get into that groove with it. Once you've had a little go at the dance, you wanna come and sit down with whatever instrument you're picking up to play and really try and feel that little walking step. Put it into your bones, put it into your body and try to kind of keep a sense of that he slight heaviness, but the counteraction of the heaviness is the lift. So we want to try and translate that feeling from the body in the dance to the music and the sound that we're making. So I'll just attempt just to sort of show you and keeping my foot regimentally stamping on the three, one, three, one. Tro don't try and put the two in. Feel the two in the music, but the three and the one stay as your pillars. Three. And just try. Just through the right hand, if you're playing a keyboard instrument, just try to get the rhythm of that on a single note. Just try and get that three, one. And you'll start to feel the two in there. There's a little waver of the two. But I'm just trying to get the pulse of the three and the one going. And that will try and just set the metronome going, if you like. On that note, there's a wonderful link down below. Ben Potten posted about this. He invented a Polska metronome that apparently then got taken over by somebody else and made better. I will link to that down below so that you can practice your Polskas with this Polska metronome, which allows you to play in three beats with a mobile two. You can kind of shift where that two is felt. Feeling the three and the one. <laughs> Andy's version, his two is fairly even after the one. At least in the first bar. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and da, 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 dum, da, da, da. Works perfectly lovely for a piece of music. But the suggestion for this coming from authentic Swedish people is that that's not technically correct. I don't really mind about technically correct, as long as we're aware that for the dance form, it's not necessarily going to work. Good dancers will dance to anything. But I think as traditional musicians, whether we're playing for dance or not, we have to be able to understand how to do things differently. And particularly when it comes to pulse, feel, stylistics, we can all learn melodies, but then actually putting our own accents on them as an English player, as a French player, as an Irish player, whatever it might be, that's all going to change. It's going to adapt the melody. It's going to slightly adapt the rhythm. It's a fun melting pot of ideas at the end of the day. And it's a real treasure trove to play around in. But at the end of the day, I think you have to choose the way that you are going to enjoy playing the tune. 
And if it's still a challenge, if it's still tricky, if the rhythm is still flummoxing you, try to find different ways of doing it and really study it, really sit down and work hard at it. Don't just write it off as, oh, I really struggled with this and that's going to be how it is forever, because it won't be. It will just take work. And looking at other cultures can often help us out of those sticky situations. So I really hope that this video helps. Let me know in the comments what you think of this whole discussion, if you think it's completely bogus, if we don't need to be kind of looking abroad for different ideas, I'm just going to play it the way I want to play it. Absolutely fine. But I think it's far more interesting to look at different cultures, learn their music in the way that they would play it to as closely as possible, but then understanding that is that what I really want to do? Is that speaking from my heart as a musician? If it is, fantastic, you've found your pot of gold. But I think for me personally, I look for different inspirations in different cultures because I want to bring it home, internalise it myself and then see how it adapts, see how I naturally adapt to it. I will always be an English Morris dancing, sort of glumping, <laughs> lumpy musician at heart. But I can also do lots of different things as well. And hopefully that's an inspiration for you and whatever instrument you play, whatever kind of music you play, just go and search. You know, that music is a language that we can all learn and be part of. And I think it's really interesting when we start to look elsewhere for inspiration. So hopefully that has worked for this video and I will see you on the next one. But do leave me comments, guys, like and subscribe to my channel and let me know what you thought about this discussion topic on Polskas. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and chatting with you there. See you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.